This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about a doubleheader, the third doubleheader mm-hmm. in in the the career of Saijin Suzuki in the Criterion Collection: Gate mm-hmm. of Flesh from 1964 and Story of a Prostitute from 1965. Uh, first up, Gate of Flesh. Mm-hmm. What what kind of movie do you think this was going in, RJ? I thought it was a Cronenberg movie, and I, I was would, pretty that, disappointed. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be sweet? A Cronenberg movie named Gate of Flesh? Like, I would, wouldn't matter which Cronenberg. It could be Brandon, even. I would be I would be completely on board with that. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I thought... Uh, I want a horror... I, where's, where's my horror movie called Gate of Flesh? You haven't made it yet, dude. I know. I'm going to have to get on that. That's the thing. You just haven't made it yet. No, I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't... Uh, mm-hmm. I guess this is close to what I thought. I don't know. In the shady black markets and bombed out hovels of post-World War II Tokyo, a tough (laughs) band of prostitutes eke out a dog-eat-dog existence, maintaining tenuous friendships and a semblance of order in a world of chaos. But when a renegade ex-soldier stumbles into their midst, lusts and loyalties clash with tragic results. With Gate mm-hmm. of Flesh, visionary director Saijin Suzuki delivers a whirlwind of social critique and pulp drama shot through with brilliant colors and raw emotions. Uh, which emotions are raw ones? Uh, onion. Onion emotions. I mean, there there definitely is color in this movie. There is. I'll, I'll give them that. Bombastic There's definitely color. colors. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Very nice fabric, very well uh, cut dresses. Um, that, right. Nice coordination as well for the color. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, primaries, yellow, red, blue. I mean, yeah, and I mean, two individual characters as well. Huge, you know, huge. It's, I mean, what are we talking about here? A Godard movie? A Wes Anderson? No, we're talking about Suzuki. What are the primary colors again, Jarrett? Red, blue, yellow. Red, blue. It's, I, I always find it weird that yellow is in there. Why is that? I don't know. I just wouldn't have thought it was the primary color. I mean, maybe it's like an ochre. Maybe uh, there's like different palettes that exist. I like suppose. okra? Did you say? Oh, yeah, like okra. Okay. I think okra is green, but all right, whatever. Well, so this is the thing. Yellow kind of is it's green? A, an extract of green. I don't know. I, I, when I'm doing all this painting and stuff, I'm looking at these, uh, these palettes, Zorn, mm-hmm. a Zorn palette. And, Zorn? Uh, Zorn. Okay, that sounds there, cool. There was a painter named Zorn, and uh, he, had, he had a different type of palette. It's like a use cadmium red, a yellow okra, or ochre, Ooh. and um, uh, white black, and is that everything? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's a limited palette, but you pretty well make all the colors you need out of that. Hmm. Which colors would you make if you could? What colors would I make? Mm, maybe a yellow with good coverage. I find a lot of Yell- yellows are uh, very uh, thin. I mean, yellow usually has the best coverage, no? No. No? Oh. Do you have, do you own any yellow clothing? Just curious. No. I don't think I do. I have one yellow shirt. It's yeah. a golf shirt. Of course it is. Hey man, it gets hot out there on them uh, on uh, them uh, their uh, golf cart. Uh, yeah, the, the, th- <laughs> the, the thing, the thing. Whatever those things are called, the fairways. Out on the course. Oh, when you're hitting some rounds with the boys, having a cold one, it gets uh, pretty uh, pretty hot. Yeah. So, Gate of Flesh is a movie that I had never seen before. Um, I don't know. Saijin Suzuki hasn't lit up my world. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, this is based on a novel uh, by uh, Taijiro Temura. Oh, for sure. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, well, I mean, of course he's one of your faves. <laughs> Who doesn't like a good uh, Temura film? Well, I mean, he, he also wrote the story in which Story of a Prostitute is based on. Well, it's just, it's like bread and butter in, in some right ways, there. This, in some ways, this is the Temura Tajiro duology. Uh, is that good? Has he popped up in the collection before? I don't. Is he a frequent collaborator with say Jun Suzuki? Mm, I don't think so. Mm. 
But but Gate of Flesh has been adapted into a movie four times. Oh, we I didn't watch any of the remakes. Oh, that's fine. I, th- I mm. think I think you've seen one Gate of Flesh. You've seen them all. Was this the first or? Yep, I think okay. so. I'm just gonna then say I, I'm just gonna say yep. Nope, nope, I'm wrong. <laughs> Nobody's I'm, gonna check. I'm, no, I'm wrong. There was one from 1948, but oh, one from 77, one from 88, and there's apparently one in a 2008 TV drama. God damn it. Um, that seems like a bit too many gates of flesh, if you know what I mean. So it's a story as old as time. A uh, young woman gets turned out by criminal dirtbags and um, kind of enters into a uh, sorority uh, with her fellow sex workers. Mm-hmm. Hijinks ensue. What kind of hijinks, Jer? Like beat beat downs, people getting killed, shivved, shot as they're trying to steal from the the army, mm-hmm. from the occupying forces of Japan, because this is, as noted, the post-World War II era. Um, Japan is in, you know, trying to cr- get its way out of it, and people are kind of left to, like... You know, figure it out. Uh, mm-hmm. Honestly, if you want to get a better snapshot and just watch a better series of movies than uh, Gate of Flesh, uh, watch Battles Without Honor and Humility. What What about, uh, is that anything like um, Pretty Woman? Uh, d- very different. It's like uh, Japanese oh. Yakuza Godfather oh. stuff. Yeah. And they're a little bit more punchy, Have an inc- has an incredible uh, score that like, punctuates the entire film series it's pretty good i like mm. the i like those honors without battle battle or battles without honor or humility far more how, how many are there five of the original Jeez. run and then there's so five parts and then there actually did new battles without honor or humility and uh i haven't seen any of those yet but i i hope they're good mm. because oh gate, gate of flesh i don't know man I don't know. Uh, Saijin Suzuki, what, the stuff we've talked about before with him, it's like Tokyo Drifter, Branded to Kill, mm-hmm. uh, Fighting Elegy, and what was the fourth one? Sword of Doom? No. No. <laughs> no. I just see if you're still awake over there. Fuck, I don't remember what the... I can look it up pretty easily here, actually. No, you can't. You can't. I have my list open somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, uh, was it like Young Beasts or Youth Beasts? Uh, youth, uh, youth, youth of, of the, the Beast. Beast. Youth of the Beast. Youth of the yeah, Beast. Yeah, that's, that's what it was. That's the ticket. Yeah, you know Youth of the Beast. Yeah, it's kind of like Branded to Kill. Um, yeah. <laughs> These <laughs> well, this movie's got cheeks in it. What kind of cheeks, Jarrett? Uh, chipmunk cheeks. Oh, not the butt variety. No. Okay. No, yeah. Joe Joe Shishido. He's the um, I don't know, the guy that these uh, the, the women take into their like house and causes a lot of drama, a lot of jealousy, mm-hmm. and they're torturing one another. You see, so, like you guys see examples of their like corrections to one another. Uh, yeah, they're, they're just like long and like shocking, I guess, for 1964. But I mean, they're yeah, it's not even <clears throat> it's not even like they're trying to like correct them or anything like that they're just like fuck you and then like those people are just done right like mm-hmm. they're yeah it's uh they're ruthless Jared. well they strip you naked they tie you up in fishnets and they leave you out in a boat for everyone to see great so, yeah so great horrible great shame great shame but it never really feels like it it's kind of like no oh, it's assumed that you're going to feel bad about anything that's going on in this movie and i don't at all <laughs> you don't <laughs> no um I didn't really wasn't really rooting for anybody. I wasn't like, mm-hmm. oh man, they're gonna get theirs. It's kind of like, oh sure, sure they're gonna they're sure they're gonna. Did do they something. get there? Do you I think? I don't know. <laughs> Did they? I don't know. I didn't watch the movie. You gotta tell me. <laughs> yeah. So <sighs> I yeah, I can talk about it. Go ahead. Go right on ahead. <clears throat> Credit where it's due. Here are the things I liked. Yeah. Uh, some some Seijun Suzuki stuff is a little bit much, but there are some good things. Like I do like um, 
I like the slow mo uh, horror roundup at the start of this thing, where it's like slow motion and they're rounding up all the prostitutes and stuff like that. I thought that was cool. I did like the color stuff. Like I liked how each of the ladies had their own color, and it wasn't just like the one dress that they wore. Like there were the backdrops with the colors and things like that. I was like, that's kind of neat. I was like, that's very whimsical in a sense. Uh, I like that, and I, I sometimes like. Uh, actually no i don't like that i i don't like when suzuki puts like the overlay stuff where it'll be like someone thinking and then it'll be like the transparent guy he does that quite a bit which uh i'm not a i'm not a huge fan of but uh, i do like the color i like some of the slow-mo stuff and like i think the story itself is like i was i was on board for it uh, on board with it for a while where i was just kind of like oh, i get it it's like a story about like working girls yeah no problem um but uh it does kind of like <clears throat> it got boring really fast for me and then also like uh it got it got into areas where i was just like i don't fucking care anymore <laughs> where it's just like kind of what you're saying it's like yeah i'm sure at the time it's very just like whoa this is crazy they're torturing like other ladies it's like yeah that's crazy man Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I'm, I'm, but then I, I'm, I feel like I'm such an old hand at this. I mean, we do Creeptober. Yeah, um, we, I've, I've, really I, I've seen I've seen us. the advanced technologies of like Japanese, like pinku, uh, <laughs> gore horror, like sure. weirdnesses, like uh, horrors of malformed men, and that movie is like fascinating, really interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my favorite movies, Blind Beast. Uh, it, it does this stuff, like, by a lot. I don't care about this, like, grounded crime stuff that, like, I don't care. I, mm-hmm. I really just, like, because it's not even Yakuza stuff. It's just, like, low-level criminals. And yeah. It's, and it's assumed that that's enough to for you to care. So he's make, so I think Suzuki was making this for a youth market that was, like, you know, tied into oh, what we watched the other few weeks ago, Crazed Fruit. Where oh, it's like suddenly, suddenly, suddenly everybody was into this, but then this movie's like obviously like quite a few notches above that in terms of like like sleaziness. Yeah. But. No, I, I I agree with you, and I do think like I know you're into weird Japanese stuff, like whatever yeah. that pinko thing was. Um, I'm I'm not as versed as you. I've seen some of it, but like I'm I'm sure there's some guy out there who will comment on the YouTube. It's like, well, actually, those these things wouldn't exist without this film. It's like, yeah, I I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's the case somewhere in history. Uh, and I actually, I don't mind that it's not bigger Yakuza stuff because he, he has done that before too. Like what is it? Youth of the beast or fighting analogy, whatever fucking one we watched before, there was a little bit more actual organized crime to it. So I didn't mind that this, I one think was youth, like youth, youth of the beast is the manager. one that had like, kind of like the gang with, yeah. the, with, with the cat. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah. That, that yeah. was awesome. But, so that's like, I don't know this, this felt very similar to that. But mm-hmm. and it also didn't like resonate with me. Way at, lower at, scale, though. At way lower scale, and well, See, so one of the big things that gets talked about with this movie, I guess, is that this movie had a ten-day pre-production period. Which, when you think about it, like how much work to get a movie made before shooting in ten days, and you think about like how ambitious the production of this is, that's impressive, I guess. But who cares but who cares <laughs> like, well, it's all it's all that stuff yeah. it's all that outside context stuff right where it's just same it's like well you got to understand the context of the country in the 60s and it's like i don't <laughs> does that stuff stuff help sure but do you know how rarely someone has read a fucking textbook on like what's going on in the place or like the production of a movie before watching it? And I know all the criterion nerds are the ones who would fucking do that. But uh, it's just like, I don't know if that should be the, I don't think that should be the marker at which we said a movie is being good or not as is like, was it hard to make? Yeah. So it's good. And it's just like, well, I know I, I agree with you. It is like impressive and that does add, it might add to your enjoyment to it. But I, I don't like when people, because like always people will comment on it. It's like, well, you don't know what happened behind the scenes. It's like, I shouldn't have to, you know? No. But uh, I mean, 10 days, that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> I Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind the low level stuff. I don't mind like the big kind of the house that the ladies live in like the way that they kind of take it out on each other i was like whatever i don't really care about this i was like it seems kind of a little gaudy i was like this is unnecessary to me um even the like the introduction of uh 
the tough guy who like the the rooster who comes to uh uh into the hen house here i was just like i don't care about this guy at all and uh as it's kind of like going on i was like i don't know yeah these two girls trying to get out they found a guy and they were gonna go but then they got beat up and maybe killed i don't know uh and you're like that's too bad um and then there's a real animal death scene in this movie yeah that how how about about that cow holy fuck like i saw it coming too and i was just like no i was like i don't i was like why what is the point like no and and then they do it and then like i know someone out there i did read those walkabout uh comments after last week where it's like that's just like how the indigenous people hunt animals it's like i get that but it's for entertainment and that's the difference there and like i feel like that too it's like yeah i'm sure some people probably fucking ate the meat out of this car my favorite was that well you're fine with depictions of children being hunted by their own parents to kill i'm like yeah, I'm pretty sure those children's lives were not they, in danger. They weren't ever. actually killed, and that's the that's the difference. You fucking moron. <laughs> well, and yeah, exactly. Uh, and that that was the same thing with this too, where it's like, yeah, I'm sure that the entire like maybe that was the last day of shooting, and the entire cast and crew had a big old barbecue. And it's like, but does that make it better? No. You shouldn't be fucking killing cows with a fucking huge hammer uh, and well, just like... But, but you do, and, and, then you, I, and then you have a nice, delicious burger at Wendy's. Yeah. Oh, I mean, there's... I, I, I know people will mark on me. I'm not a vegan, but I, I think there is a there's a better way to do things, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I saw that, and I was just like, fuck. I, I was completely fucking disengaged after that. I was like, I, I think there's 20 minutes left. I was like, I don't care. I, I think I went on my phone <laughs> and like, I know again, maybe we shouldn't do that, but I don't fucking give a shit. I was like, I'm done with this fucking movie. I don't care anymore. Fuck it. Fuck them. Yeah. Fuck them. So I didn't like, I actually liked elements of this movie and I was like, yeah, this is decent. Like I, I don't mind this. Uh, but there, there, there was a lot of stuff like I, like, I mean the animal thing, obviously, but I won't belabor that point. Uh, but in general, too, I was kind of just like, it's fucking, I was like, there's nothing interesting in this movie. The colors are nice. Like, the story is okay. I, I can, I know why people probably love this thing because people, everyone loves something. But uh, I was like, I don't care. I don't care about this. So, Gate of Flesh. G- Woo! Gate of Meh. Meh. Where would you compare this to uh, I Know Where I'm Going, better or worse? Oh, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think I would rather watch this again. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's so fine. Th- that's something, right? There's so that, you know I mean, where you're going, I guess. Yeah. I just, yeah. I know where I'm going, and it's not with I Know Where I'm Going. No, I, I, I agree. Well, because this at least has, like, interesting... Uh, like production elements to it. It does, um, yeah. Like I, it's got it, it's got nice production. Maybe it it may if I was just like in more in a mood to like watch Japanese movies right now, and I I've been so disappointed with so much of the Japanese cinema we've been watching lately in the collection. I'm just well, like Crazy Fruit was fucking horseshit. Yeah, like, that, that was that thing was so boring. <laughs> like, it's, who it's, just, cares? And it's not interesting. It's like I there there are there are better there are better movies. Uh, these oh, are just because yeah. they're in the just because they're in the collection doesn't mean that they're the best. This is the ones that they got the rights to, and they love they 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 love Suzuki. Everyone seems to like him because he made a whole bunch of movies, and some of them are crazy. Oh, what's you yeah, squares? Yeah, like yeah, I don't know. People get hung up on that too much, but uh, I mean, Saiju and Suzuki. I I see. I think he's got good elements of stuff like he does have a good eye for things and it's like I said i actually do really like the color in this movie i think i think the color is nice uh I, I liked all of that but um i don't know he's just missing something there, there's just something off yeah you know i could there's something off man you know um so the one thing that gate of flesh and story of a prostitute have in common besides like the writer uh, in, in sex sex work um mm. Is they 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 all open up with a with a nice interesting few scenes like the credits themselves are nicely done and then there's like kind of like this I don't know something captivating about how he shoots uh, the women at the beginning of this like this is just this woman walking and roving through a like a cityscape I think it's actually that was Gate of Flesh where she's just walking in parallel and there's something almost like oh hey this could be really good and then mm-hmm. and then it 
then it just went all downhill from there. Uh, story of a prostitute. It's kind of like her, like out in this like her, out on the horizon, RJ, in this like hilly Ooh. area. Yeah, and I was kind of like, oh, okay, this, I, maybe maybe this will be good. Maybe this will uh, turn this ship around of disappointment. <laughs> Yeah, as it as it drifts off to the Isle of it? of the Isle of Who Cares? No, it didn't. Um, nah. So, uh, story of a prostitute volunteering as a comfort woman on the Manchurian front, where she is expected to service hundreds of soldiers. Harume is commandeered by the brutal Lieutenant Narita, but falls for the sensitive. Mikami, Marita's direct subordinate. Saijin Suzuki's story of a prostitute is a tragic love story as well as a rule-bending take on a popular Tajiro Tamura novel, challenging military and fraternal codes of honor as seen through Harumi's eyes. Uh, is it? So, it opens was up... Was it voluntary? I didn't think it was. Yeah, you don't... So, this uh, a lot of the action takes place... What uh, mainland China? Is, uh, is, is, yeah, sure. And like, it's part of the occupying force, uh, you know, fighting against China, and yeah, yeah, the Manchurian Front. So obviously, yes, all those things are accurate. Um, and she gets kind of put on the back of this truck, and uh, she's gonna go get, get to work. It's a comfort woman, and like, so What's that mean, Jarrett? She she's gonna get fucked by hundreds of men a day, I guess. So that's cool. Like, uh, and so this so this, this movie, like this fucking Suzuki shit, I fucking hate it, because it's like, oh, like this should be horrifying, and it's presented as like, oh, oh look at that, it's just her job. It's just like she, mm-hmm. she it's like she washes dishes, but no, she's gonna be, she's gonna be getting fucked by Ben constantly. And uh, yeah. that's 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 a fun job. That's great. Sure. And there's sure. no and there's no like there's no I don't feel there's a a critique of it. It, 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 it I mean it, it is what it is. It's it's <laughs> terrifying. It should be yeah. a terrifying scene. It's just kind of like, oh, ho, ho. There's, there's the two old hands. Which, ah, this isn't so bad. <laughs> it's like, I mean, what? <laughs> there is the, uh, there's a couple scenes, like, like immediate scenes where it does, it, it is shown off very unpleasant. Like, uh, but the, after that, there's not, there's not a lot more talked about it. Like, but it's done other so, than it like, just, she's like, yeah. ah, I'm not into this. Oh, I don't, oh, oh no. Yeah. The, the general's mean. Yeah. And that's, what's bad about it. Rather than, like, just the concept of this in general. Like, oh, no, this is bad no matter what. This is... This, yeah, this, this, I mean, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. And I'm not, I'm not yeah. trying to be, like, sex shaming or... But I'm like, how can anyone, like, be like, oh, this is going to be good, great. This is uh, this is how I want to spend my time doing this. Mm. Like, this is not fun. <laughs> like, I don't know. So this is the story of a prostitute. And I feel like it's uh, bullshit. So that's great. Right. Like in general, you, yeah. you don't think it's the actual story? It is not. A, it is a story of a. It is a story of a prostitute, or a story of a prostitute, whatever. Yeah, and it's like, oh, she falls in love with one guy, and then it's like, okay, cool, mm-hmm. cool. That's who cares. So it has nothing. It's very little to do with the prostitute now. It's just like uh, how, how... I mean, it turns into a weird thing for a while, but, right? It's yes. kind of just like. It's like, oh, this is what's going on with this uh, political scene, and then Court- you go. It then has it's like courtroom drama esque, <laughs> and invasions and like uh, sentencings. Uh, yeah, there's some sentencings. There's a lot of talk about army men and like how you know, you can stay away from the liquor, stay away from the women. It'll cause you no good. And then uh, what the fuck happens in this movie? So you have a, yeah. a group of ladies. They go from one camp to another, and then you're it's it's almost it's like an internment camp, right? Kind of is where well, not to be, at the beginning it's the barracks, yeah, and then it all goes wrong, <laughs> yeah, and then it goes wrong, and then uh, yeah, we we have the adjutant, the adjunct guy, uh, he's there, he's not great, he's the general. You have another guy there, and then uh. He, he's mad. Uh, he hits the lady once, and then there's this really slow mo, silent screaming thing for a while, <laughs> and then uh, just screaming and screaming, and you go, "Oh shit, that don't look good." 
there was actually, I think, five minutes of this movie I watched on mute, Jarrett. Yeah. Because okay. Andrew was talking to me, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to pause it because I was like, I don't want to <laughs> prolong this experience. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, and I can't understand yeah. the language anyway, so I was like, I got subtitles, whatever. Yeah. So I just muted it, and I talked to her for like five minutes, <laughs> like from downstairs to upstairs, yeah. and uh, I was just watching. <laughs> and uh, honestly, I got to tell you, man, I couldn't really tell that there was no audio. You yeah. just watch this completely in silence. I don't think it makes a difference. Because once I turned the sound back on, I was like. It's like I probably could have left it off, just turned on like a CD or something, <laughs> just yeah. enjoyed something. But uh, yeah, it was um, this is a weird one. I'm not gonna lie to you, Jared. I think about 20 minutes in, I was completely checked out. I was, where I was just like, I don't care. I, I might have been on board for about half of that because I was yeah. kind of like, okay, because there's something like these movies are really well shot. Like they're they're yeah, they're they're, like, nice they're, they're a, they are well made. They're actually like they have a good production and scope, I guess, to them. Um, yeah. So the whole, what happens is the, the Chinese attack. Sure. And, and so this is of course a movie from the Japanese perspective. Yeah. And again, there's like, what, what rape of Nanking? Uh, and so the Chinese like, are now are like, okay, well there's this whole thing in Japan. It's like, well, you don't get taken like hostage. Like you don't become a, or hostage. You become a POW. You kill yourself. And um, if you fail to do that, uh, what, then you're like, oh shit, that's that's the ultimate uh, shame on your family or your countries, and you're like, yes. is, is that? But it's because and because this this woman, this woman yeah. prevented him from killing himself. Now now, yeah, that seems sticky. It's like that's semantics at that point. You're like, come on. Yeah, and so what happens is, um, they wind up getting back in like. In, un, under the Japanese authority, and now it's like, oh, hey, buddy, you gotta, you gotta kill yourself. <laughs> I mean, or, or sorry, yeah, I, 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 well, they actually, well, they they kill him, they kill him, yeah, they kill him for himself. You know, they they do it, they do him in, and uh, she gets sent back to the brothel. <laughs> yeah, she sure does. Yeah, yeah. She sure does. One thing that's cool in this is uh, there is some explosions, and that's nice. Yep, yeah. yeah. and so yeah, he's he. He he is saved from being executed uh, because the Chinese attack again. Uh, but then he tries to blow himself up to get his honor back, and uh, then she's does it like, work? Well, she she goes and joins him. And did that work? Uh, yeah, I guess they're dead. They die. Oh, that's I great. I don't know. I don't know. So tell me how you really feel. I never want to watch a Suzuki movie again. He's he's part of the Antione Club. Antione. I, I hate these. I, I hate to these guys. I hate them all. <laughs> I hate to these guys. Uh, is there? Uh, there's surely more of these, right? I don't know. We're, we got to be whittling away at the well, Suzuki we, pile, and the, I don't. We've there, seen six already. I know. I I just I don't know. It's, oh. it's, I, can I just like be like, hey, these aren't for me. <laughs> I was gonna say, how many does this guy have? But apparently, fifty-five. Oh, good lord! I hope. <sighs> yeah, we. Man, oh, no. I, I'd have been so. I, I see a couple of these banners that have the Criterion C on them, so we're not done. Oh, shit. Maybe there's like this like box sets, and I've seen them, and like I've liked them. Uh, was it Taking at the Police? Lots of, there's lots ta- of Arrow ta- ta- films. Ta- ta- Taking, yeah, I know. Taking him at the policeman police. is really, I think it's like, was pretty good. It's better than most of these things. What about teenage Yakuza? Ugh, I don't, I don't want more of that. What about like... Zegan or Weissen? Sounds great. That's the fifth most popular and we've seen the first four more popular. So oh, that's, fuck. we definitely are going to have to watch that one. Okay. What about eight hours of terror? No, that sounds cool. Lots of arrow videos actually. Yeah. What does this guy look like? Oh, he's old. Holy fuck, he's old. He just died like four years ago, apparently. Yep. Fuck, he was old, though. Look at him. I know. We've been, and RJ, we've been doing this podcast for almost five years. Did you mention when he died? I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. And you completely... Someone can talk about that. Yeah, did I say can... I don't care? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that one didn't hit me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't care when people die. People I don't know, that is. I care mm. when people I do know die. The question is, where do I put Gate of Flesh? Is it like 
better or worse than my own private Idaho? That's a tough one, actually, because is it better than crazed fruit? <laughs> yeah, okay. I think I think it's better than crazed fruit. But is it my own private Idaho is watchable? Mm-hmm. Ooh, then oh hey, in one week I'll be revealing my uh, spines two hundred and one through three hundred. Ooh shit. Yeah, you did it right. <clears throat> my uh, you and you told me this from the start, but my monster list is pretty much worthless because like I don't, uh, I can't keep this fucking straight anymore. Like, there's three hundred movies in here. My God, I got these boys. Yeah, they they're in the they're part of the like, weirdly enough the crazed fruit pack. Uh, sometimes when I do, I'm just gonna pair these right beside branded to kill because it's Suju- uh, Suzuki and it's like I don't know where else to put them because yeah. they're I mean they're. <sighs> They're not. I would rewatch my own Private Idaho, I guess, before these. I wouldn't want to do that. But then I also have them over like Gertrude, <laughs> and it's just like I don't even fucking remember Gertrude. I so, just remember so it not the, being great. Because I think the way that the weird spine numbers worked out, um, my my one th- my next one hundred will only have ninety three films. Yeah, I'm a, my total of my monster list is at uh, two ninety seven. But uh, that's also like I, I only included like one Stan Brackage movie in here, maybe two. No, two. I, I included two Stan Brackages. So oh, okay. yeah, I only represented it with like one or two Stan Brackages or something. Well, yeah. I, I had Dog Star Man, and then I had uh, the active scene with one's eyes, which was the uh, live autopsy video. No. So I I, uh, I threw that one in there. <laughs> I feel like the kids. people are gonna be really mad about our analysis of these uh, movies more than more than normal. Well, fuck them. They're n- <laughs> I know, I know someone. It's like I said. I know these movies were probably influential. I know someone probably loves them. Uh, they're they're, yeah, they're, they're culturally important, historically important. Sure. If you're and if you you got to be in some, you got to be into this. You got to be in the mood. But you gotta in like 2021, this. as a Canadian person who has no vested interest in Japan, I and, don't and, care. And that and, much. and and probably while doing a film podcast, very low interest in uh, cinema, more, more less than ever. Oh yes, more than anything, low interest in cinema and movies than probably anyone. But <laughs> because, I think because of this podcast, because of the pod, I think that that's what makes us even more qualified to do this. To be mm-hmm. honest, because every other Criterion podcast, oh, it's me, it was real good, except for that one that those people joined us. They were good, mm-hmm. but I'm assuming all the other Criterion podcasts are just oh, he's a Suzuki. He's a, such a, a visionary and. Uh, uh, he he reminds me of uh, <laughs> pa- Panos guys Mario a little bit. You go okay, <laughs> punch and bag him. Panos. I, I I'm sure that guy's actually a pretty good dude. I just yeah, it's you hate him. It's easy to pull from why, it. You why know? do you, why do you hate him? Why do I hate him? I I don't know. I don't even hate him that much. Uh, I think it's... so. Apparently, there this story was also made into a film, uh, co-written by Kurosawa and. Uh, Old uh, Senkichi Tanaguchi, uh, more romantic film called Escape at Dawn uh, for the Nikatsu adaptation. Suzuki drew upon his first-hand experience at the wartime front to portray the conditions and behavior in a more realistic light. Yeah, I don't know about that. What yeah, was like what he... was presented in the film and the actual conditions probably aren't that different, Suzuki said in a 2005 interview. Probably, he says. Probably, I, I was just like what is is or isn't, but it's like it's still this like movie talking about this uh, Sino Japanese war that. Uh... <sighs> anyway, most Japanese war movies portrayed the era with a healthy doses of tragedy, but Suzuki infused an air of ludicrousness in his films. His own opinion of the wartime military experience was that beside the brutality, it was extremely comical and absurd. Suzuki could not film on location in China, so studio sets and lookalike locations in Japan were used. What a shock. Oh, oh my gosh. No way that happened. Yeah. No way. It sounds crazy. Yeah, what are we talking about? <laughs> whatever. Hey, uh, yeah, if you really want to check out uh, Akatsuki no Daso, which is the 19... I've been looking for it for years. 50 version, apparently. Yeah. Mikami, uh, a Japanese soldier serving in China, is captured by Chinese forces. Although he is able to escape, he is treated with contempt by his peers. After falling in love with a prostitute named Harumi, she convinces him to desert the army and live with her. I mean, prostitute... Not a two. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? No, I'm saying. You want to hear about who uh, also hates these movies? 
Sure, sure. Because I, I imagine most people like them, right? Other than, uh, yeah. holy fuck, I just saw something pretty. Oh, you just saw that, did you? Holy, f- I didn't I, look at this I, before. I, 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 I saw this. Uh, I saw this a few days ago. <laughs> I uh I I opened the page up, but I didn't look until just now. But um, you, whew, take it away, bud. All right, so uh, if, Gary Collection, <laughs> half a star. What the hell is <laughs> what the hell is this crap? It's not even in English. From what I could gather, it's about a bunch of women of the night who beat the crap out of Johns, torture each other, and like simulated golden showers. This evil cow shows up and gets killed, and a random black priest, oh fuck, we didn't even talk about him, wanders the country blessing the dead bodies of the streetwalkers. Or maybe he's killing them to free them. Not sure. This is the best I could figure. This is horrible. Might be better if you could understand the language. Might not as well. Side note, I only watched the trailer so I could be uh, way out to lunch on what this movie is about i mean he's not far off but uh i forgot we mentioned that lady raped the black priest we forgot to mention yeah yeah she uh she worked through the no she worked through and and, and and that and that shot of like the cross that he was holding around her neck but then it's like cast to the side and then he feels real bad yeah well i mean i i felt bad for that dude he didn't want any of that you know he didn't want that she Not got really. Him. She got him though. She got him. Uh, so I, I think it's, um, I think it's pertinent to uh, mention a few things here. There is some tags used uh, for this film. We have a tag called "Screw You, John Criterion." Uh, and uh, this Gary Collection fellow, here's a bio for you, Jared. Uh, following no one, followed by no one until now. Uh, here's a bio: just a hipster in the village doing hipster things. I like organic fair trade coffee and most vegan cuisine. I am. I also like torturing myself by watching some of the worst movies in history, which are neatly (laughs) compiled for me in the criterion (laughs) collection. (laughs) This is, uh, this is a good one. I hope this picture is really, is really whoever this is, by the way. uh, No, no. Okay. Well, I, I I like it. Favorite films include criterion hits, Fat Girl, Salo, <laughs> Flesh for Frankenstein, and Armageddon. Ooh. Uh, not so good films include King of Kings, Rules of the Game, Mabuse, Thieves Highway, which is interesting. Uh, Pepe Le Shit. Uh, what else we got on here? Days of Wrath, My Man Godfrey. You know, oh, I know where I'm going. Remember that one, Jarrett? I know where I'm going. Oh, all the W.C. Fields. Hey, did I ever tell you about that W.C. Fields story about that call that work coworker of mine? I think so. He was like, uh, "Hey, uh, you, you, he's like, you don't watch good movies like W.C. Fields." And I was just like, "Oh, the bank dick." And he's like, "No, that's not W.C. Fields." And I was like, "What?" No, I was like, I "Don't did you like, did you tell me that story?" <laughs> I don't think what? so. And I was just like, "I'm pretty sure it is." And he's like, "Nope, it's not him." Oh. And uh, he's like, "You don't know W.C. Fields?" And I was like, "Yeah, like silent era comedian." He's like, "Nope, wasn't silent era." I was like, "Well, some of them were in sound." Yeah. And I was like, but like, I was like, it was old time comedy. He's like, no, you don't know him. And I went, I just went, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jesus. I just, I didn't know what else to say at that point. That's awesome. I was like, the bank dick. And he's like, nope, not the bank dick. And I went, okay. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure it is. And this guy's like 63 or something oh, too. Dear. So oh, I was dear. just like, all right, whatever. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Well, th- this isn't quite my mental image of Gary collection. Uh, I, I thought it'd be an older, I, I, schlubbier he, guy. Not, well, yeah, it's definitely older and schlubbier, and I think he gives everything three stars. <laughs> and like, and it's only because like his uh, brother told him that he'd really like it. Like, he knows a lot of people use uh, it, yeah. and he's like, yeah, you should use it, but he barely uses it. And then he stops using it for eight months, and then he starts up again and uses it for like a, a couple days, and then he completely stops because he forgets. He's like, oh yeah, I should do that more often. Yeah. And he's like, uh, oh yeah, my brother. Dennis collection. He's always giving me a hard time. You know, he's uh, I should do it more. You know, <laughs> he says it's uh, a lot of people. It's a good community. A lot of people are involved, and I, he, I should really. He, he says I should get more involved, but you know, you know. <laughs> I just I just don't know, man. I'm I too, just you know I'm too busy watching these movies that this guy named John sends me. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't even subscribe to this thing. I don't know where these movies come from. I just. <laughs> I just watching him, I guess. I don't uh, know. Well, because jo- this is Gary is John's project. 
Right. He's, he's trying like, to I, en- he's trying to enrich in the masses. He's trying to she's all that him like yeah. pretty woman him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was a I, I I that was a genuine response for me. I didn't see that before, and I went, "Holy fuck! Yeah. <laughs> what do we have here?" Yeah, I saw that a few days ago, and I was like, "Ooh, I have to Good save, stuff. have to keep that from RJ to, to get that very reaction." I mean, I don't do prep, so that's right. P- people know that we don't even watch the movies anymore. Uh, Mark, <laughs> we watch them on mute, <laughs> and, talk, and you can and, barely and talk tell. to talk to loved ones. And who gives a shit? <laughs> The, the difference is negligible. Negligible. All right. Next up, we got Mark, one star. I really don't enjoy Suzuki's films. This was an absolute chore to sit through. Couldn't stand this. I'm not going to bother seeing any more of his films. <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's fair. I'm, I'm out. I'm out. That's fair. This this person's got very strange. Like, they favorite film is The Apartment, which is a good film. And they five-starred Passion of Joan of Arc, which is also good. But then they five-starred Walkabout. They one and a half starred Soylent Green, and then they half a starred Do the Right Thing, Jarrett. So <laughs> they're all over the place, this person. Hmm. They also uh, half a starred Nutty Professor, which I feel like isn't fair. Curious. Okay. Yeah. This, this is a lengthy one, but it's, okay. it's for feels for reels. Gotcha. One star. A cinematic turd divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I want. I watched a whole hour of this horse shit, already knowing I was going to rate it poorly. At first, I was dazzled by some of the visual flourishes here and there, like how the prostitutes wear and are represented by different colors, or the random spotlight that might follow a character, the flashes of memory or overwhelming emotion utilizing split screen. But take this all away, and we are still left with a story about supposedly tough and independent women who are actually just waiting for a man to come along and take control. When he does mm. appear in the form of a Japanese soldier hiding out in their lair after stabbing an American GI. The ladies swoon over his appetite for food and sex, his cynical worldview, his casual violence. In one particularly gritty and disgusting scene, one of the prostitutes is tied up naked and whipped by the others for the crime of having had sex with a man for free. The soldier looks on in excitement as justice is served, observing nice body, while the helpless woman cries out in pain. Later on, when the man she supposedly loves asks her to marry him, she says, I'm so happy. But of course, that doesn't stop her from jumping into bed with the soldier moments later, to whom she says, I would follow you anywhere. I guess deep down inside, all women just want a man to overpower and objectify them. My internet was going in and out on the road, and every time it came back on, I sort of struggled with whether or not to continue watching. At first, it was curiosity that kept me going. Then it was the fact that I had so little time left to go that I may as well finish watching it to make sure this movie deserved every single negative thing I had to say about it. It was getting to feel like such a chore sitting through this, and then came the final straw. The soldier walks into a room with a cow, petting it, and explaining to the prostitutes that he is going to kill so they can eat it. And I thought, there is no way they are going to kill this cow in the movie, right? I wasn't going to wait to find out. I looked it up, and yes, mm-hmm. apparently they did in fact slaughter the cow in a very brutal and bloody scene. So that's where yes. I left it. The cow is still alive in that room, surrounded by weird people who have a fetish for violence. They probably want to fuck each other on a pile of cow entrails and use cow blood as lube, but I'm not probably. really interested in finding out. Putrid. I mean, I agree. It is putrid. I 100% agree with that. Feel. I mean, that's a good review. Feels for reals. Uh, they got the. They got some good tastes. They got some interesting tastes. I mean, favorite films include Sawdust and Tinsel, mm-hmm. Picnic at Haney Rock, which I wasn't a big fan of, but you know, Woman in the Dunes and Yo Jimbo. Uh, Yo Jimbo. They have starred Toby Dammit though, which is uh, interesting. Hmm. But I mean, uh, most of their ratings, I'm somewhat on board with. They once starred Crazed Fruit as well, so, and <laughs> they also once starred Gertrude. So <laughs> Gertrude, Gertrude, they're on board with us for uh, things that they don't like. Uh, for for, the for uh, the story of a prostitute, we got two two of them for you. Derek Holmes, because this, this movie is like half the number of people have watched this as have seen yeah. um, the other, which is curious. I, I, I bet people watch Gate of Flesh and then it's like it's a double header and they go, No, it's not. Not for me. <laughs> I, I get to choose what I do with my life. Exactly. Uh Derek Holmes, a bad time at the movies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I agree. I agree with you, Derek Holmes. Mm-hmm. Let's see some uh these four favorite films. Intruder in the Dust from nineteen forty nine. 
starting over from 1979, The Man Who Cheated Himself from 1950, and Silver Load from 1954. Movies I have no idea and never knew existed until tonight. Outstanding. Uh, yeah. And uh, one more. Ruben Barbosa, listener Ooh. of the show. At least, Interesting. Or at least follows us on the pod on the letterbox. Mm-hmm. Watches these criterions. Yes. The Devils. I am a fugitive from a chain gang. Pink Floyd, The Wall, The Big Heat, California Split, HUD, Barfly, The Roaring Twenties, Possession, The War Game. None of these great movies are in the Criterion Collection or have a widely available Region 1 Blu-ray. But hey, at least we have Saisha Suzuki's instant classic story of a prostitute to watch. Who knew that two movies about prostitutes could be so fucking boring? I mean, true. I think there's a comment there, too, that's pretty good. I don't know if you can see the comment. Uh, I'm not on the comment. I'm, uh, I, 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 I copy and paste. Jarrett, you ruined my whole shtick here. I'm but sorry. Other, other people can go and read that comment. It's a pretty good one. Mm. Pretty, pretty good. So Ruben Barbosa, uh, who, ha, favorite films include There Will Be Blood, Paris, Texas, Clockwork Orange, and Rosemary's Baby. So, you know, pretty good stuff. Pretty good shoe. Pretty good yeah. shoe. Pretty good shoe, uh, if you know I, I, mean. and I, I agree with these these picks. These are all good criterion options. Could be, if they took things seriously. I mean, if they tried. If they, if, if they tried. But, you know, John's not about that. He's not. He, he's just trying to get Gary in there, and it's just... <laughs> Make him better. <laughs> just fix me. And you go, mm-hmm. okay. I, didn't, uh, I mean, I didn't ask to get fixed. He's like, I never really Shh, wanted hush, this. Hush, so. hush, Gary. And you go, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. You got any final thoughts here on these? Uh... No, nah, pe- people will be all over us for this one, but I well, don't or, or not, I don't even know if they care. No one cared about Maybe craze. Not. No one cared about craze fruit. Maybe they're Good. not, not going to care about this either. Good. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not, sad. There might be some person that's like, oh, man, I was hoping that they'd fall in love with Suzuki. With these I two. mean, I don't know. if people have been following along with us, I feel like they've long given up on holding out that we are going to like the movies they like, which it's like, I know that's a bummer, but like, we don't like anything. So the sooner you realize that, the, the happy. Well, I mean, yeah, but you'll be happier off not hoping. I, that we like yeah, the I guarantee you that I like the movie next week. It's a big. Uh, that's a big matzo ball to hang out there. You know. You, you know why? No. Klaus. Klaus. The, the, the greatest Willem Dafoe character ever. I love Klaus. Mm-hmm. I love Klaus. After the break, um, RJ kills himself, and then I throw myself on his uh, exploding body too in, in the battlefield. That is criteria. I could get over that. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't have to it would free up Sundays. Well, Andrew would be happier too because her Sundays would be freed up as well. She doesn't watch the films with me, but she mm-hmm. she knows I have to. So no. does she? Does she hate Criterion as much as we do? No, but she she's only watched I'd say about twenty five percent of these. So she 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 doesn't love it. I'll tell you that much for sure. <laughs> But I, that's very. I, I only try to show her movies I think are going to be good. So there, there's a little bit of bias there, you right. know. And she still doesn't like it. And she's st- well. I mean, sometimes I'll be like, "This sounds good," and we'll watch it. And we'll be like, "This sucks." A lot of a lot of regret. No regrets, Jared. No regrets. Only Gertrude's. <laughs> Fucking Gertrude. 